Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Quality in a Quick Video Series. My name is Bob Cruz, President and Co-Founder of Checkpoint Technologies. You know, I'm really excited today in that I want to chat with you about one of my favorite topics, which is risk analysis. One of the most common questions I get asked by organizations is, what change, what process would they implement to quickly improve quality in their organization? And there are two things I typically will mention to them. One is peer reviews, and we'll be talking about that in another episode, um, but as well as risk analysis. So if you think about it, a primary goal of a software tester is to reduce the risk associated with the deployment of software into production. So it really does make sense, doesn't it? The very process of test planning should be based upon an understanding of the types and magnitudes of risk throughout the entire software application lifecycle. So in that sense, and we're going to talk about risk analysis in the context of software testing. So what is the risk equation? So the risk equation is risk equals likelihood times impact. Likelihood is also known as probability. Impact is also known as criticality. The software tester must understand what loss can happen and the likelihood that it will happen. With risk analysis, you have to ask, well, how risky is it? How likely is it to happen in production and what will happen if the functionality our test is validating fails in production? That could be a disaster. This is why it's beneficial to calculate a risk score, whether it's for your requirements, test cases, and or defects. The value of calculating a risk score is enormous. So generating a risk score can help do the following. High-risk applications or functionality can be identified and resources allocated appropriately. So you can switch team around, switch resources. Testing can be focused on critical components and or quality dimensions that are most important in a particular application system. And it allows you, it enables you to find the scariest defects earlier. So that gives more time to the developers to fix, and I guarantee you they will absolutely love you, the tester, for that. So when you're looking at the risk levels involved in the risk equation, we're going to talk about two different levels for risk scoring. So the first we're going to talk about is impact, as I mentioned before, also known as criticality, which is the consequences or the impact of failure to your organization or the potential loss to your organization if that risk should occur. Likelihood, also known as probability, so you have to take into account there perhaps the size, the system environment, the reliability, and the technology integration and other factors when you're looking at the likelihood. So with component scoring, you're going to take a look at the impact. So the in impact can be as simple, if you will, or as complicated as you want it. So with the impact, you might have, as you can see on this table right here, you might identify an impact of zero, which means no impact at all, you're good. It might be an impact of 10, where that's a major impact, major loss to your organization, potential loss of life, perhaps. Or you can go even less granular and perhaps just come up with five different ratings for the impact. So hopefully this table will give you an idea as to how granular you can get if that's what you choose to do. The next thing that you're going to take a look at are some of the different risk dimensions because these risk dimensions come into play when calculating the likelihood. Because when you think about it, for example, if you're implementing brand new technology, the likelihood of failure is higher. So some different uh, parameters that you would look at is criticality or mission impact, the system size, scale, and complexity, system environment and stability, reliability and integrity, 
and as I mentioned, technology integration, because all of those play a role in the likelihood as to whether or not that functionality or system might fail once it's in production. You can absolutely come up with other parameters if you choose. So with the component scoring procedure, the process that you're going to follow with risk analysis is that you're going to compare to other components in the same application. And there are three steps to scoring an application. So step number one, you're going to determine the impact of failure. Step number two, calculate the probability score. Step number three, plot those scores on a risk analysis chart. So imagine a chart with four different quadrants. You're going to have quadrants one, which is low probability or low likelihood, high impact. And then quadrant four is going to be high probability, high impact. So you're going to end up using the results to focus your testing efforts. And obviously, you are first going to focus on the components in quadrant four. You're going to test those first. Next, you focus on quadrant three, and so on, two, and then last, one. You will find that if you are not able to test everything, your leadership will love you if you're at least able to say, hey, I tested at least all of the high impact, high probability, high impact, low probability, and so on first. So I hope you found this beneficial. Hope you enjoyed today's quality in a quick video. Have a great day and please send us an email. Let us know any topics you would like to hear about. And also here are some upcoming events that Checkpoint Technologies is very proud to be sponsoring in the near future. Have a great day.